Okay, how about now? Yes, sir. Now I see I, I see the people, I, I see myself also. Excellent. Is that okay now? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, that was a problem. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so um, as I said, um, uh, please feel free to stop me if, any, if you have any questions. And we will also have a time to uh, discuss any questions you have at the end of this lecture. And also, you're welcome to ask questions about the introduction, the presentation, the video you watch. So we are going to talk about image filtering, edge detection, convolution. So this is like a very basic material. Uh, some of you already may already know, but we just want to start with uh, assuming that you don't have any background to build this foundation. So I'm going to start with image filtering and talk about uh, image derivatives and averages, uh, and then we'll go to edge detection. So um, you guys learn from calculus the notion of derivative. So derivative is rate of change. So like a speed is rate of change of a distance, it's less than rate of change of a speed. And also you know about the notion of mean or average. You sum up the value divide by n, that's an average or mean. And so derivative, the definition is like this. It's a derivative of a function, f. So we find the value of function x, f at x and at x minus delta x, small distance from x, and then divide by delta x. And we take a delta x as small as possible uh, so that it goes to zero. And that is the derivative definition. It's called f prime x or fx, f subscript x. And um, so the derivative of distance is speed and derivative of acceleration, derivative of speed is acceleration. And you also know these analytic derivatives. So if you have function x squared plus x4, then derivative is 2x plus 4x cubed. And if it is sine function, the derivative of sine is cos. If it's exponential, then it's exponential, then derivative of the exponent, which is minus one in this case. Um, so now what we are gonna do is we'll compute derivatives of an image, an image that discrete. Um, so, you know, that will restrict us how small delta x can be. Uh, from the definition, delta x has to be very, very small, close to zero, but it cannot be zero, then this will be undefined. So smallest delta x will be one. So therefore, you know, this is the discrete derivative. So basically you take the value of function f at x and at x minus one subtract it, and that's a change or derivative. Okay, so, uh, and this is the way, you know, it's defined because one we can remove. Um, so this is also called finite difference approximation of derivative. And uh, this is called backward difference because we are looking at X and we are going back X minus one and finding a difference. And there is um, something called forward difference. So we go X plus one and find the difference. And then there's a central difference, which is uh, we find the derivative at x, but we find this difference between x plus one and x minus one, okay? So there are different ways to approximate the derivative. So the example will be that, you know, let's say this is a one dimensional function. We have these values, 10, 15, 10, and all this thing, and we want to find the derivative. So we'll apply the backward difference. So here, first element we can compute would be at 15, and we subtract 15 from 10, we get phi. 10 from 15, we get minus phi. 10 from 10, zero, and so on. We cannot compute at here the first one because we don't have the previous one. So we just put zero, and that's the first derivative uh, using this uh, backward difference. And we can find second derivative, which is a derivative of derivative. So again, and five minus zero is five, minus five minus five is 10, zero minus minus five is five and so on. So uh, this is nice and uh, pretty good. So um, we are going to you know, start talking about these masks or filter um, and we will build upon our terminology um, based on that. So as you remember that back 
backward difference is one minus one. So that's a mask or filter. And forward difference is one minus one. And the center difference is uh, minus one, one in the center zero. So we are, this is the size of filter here. Our mask is three and here's two and two. So now images are two dimension. So we have the function, which is a function of X and Y. So therefore we have a gradient, which is a vector. So derivative with respect to X and derivative with respect to Y and f superscript x, f superscript y. So that's a gradient vector. So vector, as you have learned, has a magnitude, which is given by this, and it is a direction, which is given by this, tangent inverse fy upon fx, okay? So we are going to compute derivative of an image. And again, for this one, we will have a filter or mask. And um, instead of just looking at the one row, we are going to look at actually three rows and we'll kind of do the average. We'll find the backward difference in this row, backward difference in this row, I mean, sorry, the center difference in this row, center difference here, center difference here, add it up and divide by three. So that'll give us a average derivative of that pixel at, uh, in, in direction X. So, um, so which means, um, and similarly, when we want to find derivative in y direction, so again, we have three by three filter. So we'll find one minus one, one minus one, one minus one, is a central difference uh, in the two dimension. So, so let's say we have an image like this. So we will center this um, filter, which is this one, uh, and, component by component we multiply and then add it up. So this minus one divided by 10, zero with 10, one with 20, minus one with 10 and so on. So we will sum it up and as you can see that that will become, because this 20 minus 10 becomes 10 and um, this will become 10 and 10, so 30 divided by three is 10. So at this pixel, because this is center, so we'll get value 10. And uh, again, we cannot compute the derivative at the border points because we don't have, we cannot fit a three by three filter around these, we don't have. So we'll put the zeros on the border and we can do the same thing. We get 10 here, then we can shift the filter. Now we want to compute the derivative here. So again, 20 minus 10 is 10, 20 minus 10 is 10 and 10, 30 divided by three is 10. So we'll get three here. And you can apply this filter compute like this. And that way we'll compute the derivative of this image, very simple example uh, in the X direction of FX. So we can do the same thing um, for the Y and um, we will apply the mask in other direction. So here for this pixel, we'll be at 10 minus 10 is zero, 10 minus 10 is zero, 20 minus 20 is zero. So all these pixels be zero because there's no change in y direction, but there's a change in y x direction. So that's why. So that's the derivative. Now, um, this application of the filter or mask, uh, there is a notion of what is called correlation and convolution. And they are very related. And this application of mass basically is the convolution. And the term correlation convolution or change used interchangeably. So this is a definition of the correlation. So we have the image F and this is our kernel, our filter, our mask, and we are, and this is our correlation and a sign. And we have a double summation as you saw that we are going through every row and every column within the X, uh, every column. And so, um, so, 
M is a, F is an image and H is a kernel or a mask. And so let's say F at that pixel is, we look at three by three window and these are the values. And then the kernel or mask is this one. So we're multiplying the corresponding pixel F1 with H1, F2 with H2, and all these things we sum it up. And that is the correlation of F with H. And that's a definition, it's double summation as you see here. Um, so now convolution is represented by this star sign. Correlation is represented by this sign, the cross and with the circle. So the difference between convolution and correlation is that <clears throat> in the convolution we flip. So this become minus K minus L as compared to as you saw here, which was just K and L. So that's the only difference, okay? So again, this is an image F, kernel H, and this is a H, uh, so we flip the H and uh, now it becomes like this. So as you see here, uh, we had uh, H, uh, <clears throat> so you're going to, if you flip the, flip the X flip, so we have H1, H2, H3 will come, uh, H1, H2, H3 will come flip around X axis, will become here, and then H7, H8, H9 will become up here. And we are flipping around this one, so that will not change. So that's an X flip. Then which is, you know, this one minus K. Then we are going to flip after that Y flip. So now we are going to flip in the Y direction like this. And as you see that uh, H9, H6, H3 will come on this side and H7, H14, H1 will come on this side. So this is the mask. And then we will just multiply pixel by pixel. And that will give us the, uh, convolution and will become F1, H9, F2, H8. So as you see here, pixel by pixel multiply like that. So that is a convolution. Now, if the filter is symmetric, uh, which means that um, um, this value H, um, H1 and H3 are the same. Most of the filters are symmetric and H6 and H, uh, four is same and H9 and H7 is same. Similarly, if the symmetric around Y axis like H2 and H8 um, is same. So then the, even you flip, then it will be the same. It will not make a difference. So therefore for symmetric filter, convolution and correlation are same thing. There's no difference. So therefore convolution and Correlation terminology is used interchangeably. So you want to keep in mind that you know, they're talking about the same thing. The only difference is if the filter is not symmetric, then they are different, okay? So that's a very important uh, notion of convolution. And so uh, again, the equations are here. Um, for any uh, X, Y, we apply the filter and we go through this loop X and Y, we take a different values of uh, I and J. So this is a three by three filter. So I will go minus one, zero, one. J will go from minus one, zero, one. So we can expand this summation to this one. As you see here, so we have X plus one, Y plus one, okay? So we are taking um, the um, value of X and Y and uh, let's say it took a um, value of the X minus I, Y minus I. So we start with I minus one and um, J minus one. And um, so here it should be J. And then H is minus one, one. Then here next one will be um, a J, I is zero, but um, um, the J is minus one, then here I will become plus one, and um, then J will become minus one. Then from here, then we will take the <clears throat> uh, 
um, value of the <coughs> different values of the um, we took uh, we fixed the value of the um, minus one minus one minus one and there were three different values of the j minus one zero and one then similarly now we will take the different value of j zero 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 and then with that we'll take different values of i minus one zero and one now we'll take a third value of the j which will be one in uh, every case will be one one but then we'll take a different values of the i minus one zero and one so this is a loop uh, you guys are familiar there are two loops one for i one for j we expand this we get nine values and that is the you know you will write uh, this code to apply this filter to every point x looking at three by three neighborhood you will apply this filter and then you shift then you then you take a next pixel say x plus one y plus one again you will shift and you apply this thing and keep going so that's a convolution and the whole revolution in the deep learning is based on this convolution idea. So that's why it's called CNN, convolutional neural network. So this is a basic operation which you would be doing. Okay, so again, uh, more examples. So we have a function f here and uh, we are going to convolve at this pixel x, the filter, and uh, which we show the neighborhood three by three. And then this is our kernel and then um, these are the x, y coordinate as we talk about. That center is zero, zero, which is i and j, zero, zero here. And here, um, i is minus one, zero, one. And uh, then similarly, we have different values of the, <coughs> the j. So the, uh, with this way here, as you see that uh, <coughs> y, in this case, um, zero, and um, the, um, uh, I mean, j, j is um, zero, then one, and two, and uh, same way we can expand these here. So this y zero here, go up y is one, and go down y is minus one, and um, similarly, X is moving just, uh, you, you guys are familiar with that. So X and Y, uh, we can call X, Y, or we can call I, J, it's the same thing. Okay, so now, um, so this is a notion of how you apply a filter and why we want a filter, because we want to filter the noise. And the noise in image is due to light variations because when you take a picture, as you learned in the first lecture, uh, it depends on the light source, on the camera, the surface characteristic and so on. And it depends on the electronics, uh, and the lens and other things, and depends on surface reflectance and uh, all those things. So now um, the simple way to um, Remove the noise is called the mean filter or average filter. Now you already know the notion of mean. So you take the numbers, say I1 to IN, sum it up, divide by N, that's the mean of these numbers. Um, so there's something called weighted mean. And um, so this is equal weighted, each element is weighted equally, we just sum them up but we can assign different weight to each element. And these are the weights, W1 to Wn, and we sum it up and divide by it. Now we'll assign a weight so that when we take the summation of the weights, it should be one. So that you know, we, we can have the, the scale version of this uh, mean should be within the range of these elements. So um, very good um, weighted averaging can be obtained what is called Gaussian filter or the normal distribution or bell curve. You have must heard about this. And this is a formula for that. 
So we have exponential e to the power minus x square upon two sigma square. So here is zero mean and then sigma standard deviation. Um, so we can take uh, different values of x and then take the value of sigma is equal to say one and we can substitute here, we can get the values of this filter. Suppose if you put, um, put the value of x is zero, so e to the power zero is one. And, and when we put x is equal to one and sigma is one, then you can get your from a calculator, you will get a value 0.6. When x is two, you will get 0.13. When x is three, which is 0 0.001. Now this is symmetric as you see, you look at the zero here, this left side and right side exactly the same. This is a symmetric filter. So in this case, correlation, convolution, same thing. So therefore minus one will give you the same as plus one, minus 2.13, minus 3.001. Also, you know from the normal distribution that um, the uh, after three sigma, uh, then this will go down. 99% of this will go down, and that's what's happening. You know, uh, this is after three sigma on the left, three sigma on the right. So therefore, uh, no, this is uh, like a filter also. So this range of the size of this filter is seven. Uh, center one, three on the right, three on the left. We talk about um, the filter when we are finding derivative, which was three size or two size, now here the filter is of three, uh, seven size. So now since images are 2D, so we have to look at 2D Gaussian, which looks like that. And um, so again, this is a formula, so it's uh, you know, extension to two dimension, X and Y. And uh, again, sigma. So if sigma is equal to two, we can then get this filter in 2D. So again, here we'll take the different values of X and Y and um, then find out the whatever value we have here um, and um, um, get the numbers and normalize between zero and 255. So as you know, when X is zero, Y is zero, this will become one. So this is um, um, the um, sigma is equal to two. So this is um, um, <clears throat> larger size. So as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so 13 by 13 mask, okay? Because when sigma is equal to two, so we want two sigma, which is, you know, three sigma, um, three times, um, and sigma is two, which will become, um, in, you know, the six on one side, six on the other side, and uh, that become 12 and one in the middle. So you can actually verify, you take different values of X and Y, you'll get these values. Uh, so this is a 2D filter of the Gaussian filter. And what we have done that whatever value we got here, we have multiplied by 255 so that we have all integers and truncation. In the one dimensional case, what we did, as you see here, we just put the actual values and we can multiply here also to get all integer values, okay? So that's the 2D Gaussian filter. So now, um, you know, there are different names of these filters. One, this is called box filter, where we take the uh, values uh, in a small neighborhood, three by three neighborhood, we add them up and divide by nine and um, that's called box filter. So here's the image, and um, this is our kernel, our filter, which is this, and it's a formula as I showed you earlier. And so we want to look at the neighborhood of this, and we want to compute the after applying this filter. So let's say we want to compute here, so which means that, as I showed you again earlier, that we look at three by three neighborhood and we apply this filter pixel by pixel and all are zero, so that'll become zero. Then we move here. Um, so here we have 
only one element is 90. So 90 multiplied by one will be 90, then multiply by nine, because that nine pixels become 10. So like this, then this has 290, so it'll be 20 and so on. You can fill this up yourself. Now, um, um, when we look at here, uh, now we have zeros, we have 90 and um, zero here. So we want to apply filter here. So can anybody tell me what, what should be number here? Uh, please turn on your microphone. What should be the number here? No? Is it 50? I didn't hear, but you know, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, good. So how about here? This is pretty easy, right? 90. 90. Yeah, so 90 because all are 90, okay? So that's fun. So, um, so that was about um, box filter. We just, uh, you know, average. And um, so it is doing this replacing each pixel with an average. So it's kind of smoothing out. And so um, this image on the left, we apply box filter look like that. It will blur the edges. Okay, so then this is filter, another filter. So what do you think what this filter will do? We apply every pixel this filter and what will, and this original image, this is a eye of a Einstein. So what do you think we should expect on the right? Uh, does it sharpen the image? It's just taking the pixel it's and the um, same image. Same pixel. It's not doing anything. It'll be same. No change. Okay. And how about this one? You would shift the image over a little yes. bit. Yes, one pixel shift like this. Okay. And uh, how about this one? <clears throat> So this is like average, then it is multiplying the pixel in the center and subtracting from the average, okay? So it look like this would be sharpening the filter. So there's, you know, lots of these filters. So before and after look like that, okay? Um, so you're gonna look into these filters in detail and this is um, uh, computing the derivatives, okay? It's computing which direction derivative, can you tell me? The x direction or y direction? X direction is x direction because this this is like this. Okay, so now it will look like this it's vertical, and then this one will be in y direction. It will be like this. Um, so it'll be horizontal edges. Okay, so now we want to get more detail in edge detection. And so we're going to talk about the gradient operators, uh, which in which we are going to talk about Previt and Trabel. You actually already saw those. Then we are going to talk about uh, two important edge detectors, Laplacian of Gaussian, and also second one is gradient of Gaussian. Um, so, so given an image, we want to come up with the places where there's sudden change. And these are the discontinuities and that's where those are important for perception. So most of the semantic information and shape information we can gather from the edges. And that can like compress the image and compact the pixels. And um, this will be like artists line drawing of an image, uh, which is, you know, kind of object level knowledge, you know. So um, example is given an image like this, these are, these are edge images. We are finding the boundaries where the, there are edges. So another example, these are the edges. So origin of edges um, um, is caused by a variety of factors. So if you look at this image like this, so 
if you look at this one, is what is happening, the orientation of the surface is changing and there's a discontinuity. The surface like this then it changes. And so that's an edge here. Then if you look at this one, there's a depth discontinuity, the distance is changing. So here's a one distance, but all of a sudden there's nothing. So that's a depth discontinuity. And here, the color is changing. As you see, there's a black, then the white. And here, uh, the illumination is changing because it's a shadow. So all these different um, <clears throat> uh, factors give rise to edges, and we have to detect those. So there are different kind of edges, you know, because edges basically change. And uh, this is a step edge, so there is, you know, one level and all of a sudden becomes this. This ideally the edges are like this, but uh, practically the edges can be right. They slowly change from one level to other. It can be roof edge, you know, one edge then other edge like this, or spike edge and so on. So, um, so if you have an image like this, now if you look at the small window, so there is one edge very you know, blurry edges. There's another edge here, which is shown green. There is a third edge, which is shown blue. There is, a, if you look at this one, there's an edge here. And if you look at this one, uh, there is a, also an edge, so it doesn't show. So, um, so edge is a place of rapid change in the image intensity function. And um, this is a pulse edge. So there is a edge here, then constant, that's another edge, okay? Um, so now in order to find the edges, so we can compute because edges are where change is happening. And that's why we talk about derivatives. So first derivative of this will be like this. And the peak and first derivative will give us location where the edge is. So here's the edge, here is the edge, okay? So now if you look at the intensity profile at this pixel here, this row, it will look like that, okay? Um, so that's, you know, is different. This is a real case compared to ideally just step edges, you know, very nicely. Um, so if you find derivative, it will look like that. So there are many, many edges, you know. Now, um, the change can happen, you know, negative or positive. We want to find both changes. We want to look at the extrema, the so maxima or minima, and uh, those are edges. Now, if there's a little noise, then this can become pretty weird, you know, lots of changes, and very difficult to find these edges. So therefore, we want to remove the noise and removing noise means we want to filter the noise. And Gaussian is one good filter, as we talk about. The symmetric is very nice, smooth function. So now the question is, we gave you an example of Gaussian sigma is equal to two, um, but you know, it can be sigma one or three. So the you know, question is, what should be the sigma value when you apply Gaussian filter? So this sigma is one here sigma three here and sigma seven here. So when you increase the sigma value, then blurring uh, will increase. Um, so, so now with that background, um, so we talked about the notion of gradient or the derivative. We talk about the average of filter. So now we are going to talk about Space, specific edge detectors, which have been reported in the literature. And then historically, we go from simple gradient operators. These were the initial edge detectors. Private is the name of a researcher who came up with this idea. Then Sobel is another researcher, Sobel edge detector. Then the two major edge detector, which came in 80s, these other ones you know, came in 50s or 60s. Um, one is Laplacian of Gaussian, and other is gradient of Gaussian, a Kenny edge detector. Okay, 
So prevent and surveillance detector. Um, so they compute derivatives. Okay. So we compute derivative in x and y, which is we, we compute gradient, and um, we find the gradient magnitude uh, and just threshold the magnitude. So that's it. That's a very simple edge detector. Um, so prevent edge detector is we start in the image like this, and we compute the the uh, we smooth the image in X direction um, by averaging, and we get a blurred image. And then we find the derivative in X direction, okay? So these should give you edges in X. So the way we do average is that we take the um, three values, you know, three small neighborhood, and that is uh, your mask. And then we compute the derivative in X direction. This is your central difference, as I told you before. And then we combine these, the average and the derivatives. We come up with this 2D mask, and that is the derivative in X direction. We do the same thing. We take an image. Um, uh, then the um, <clears throat> derivative filtering in Y and blurred, then after that average and smoothing in Y. So this will become, you know, first we do the derivative now, the Y direction, as you see, it's vertical as compared to horizontal here. And then we blur, now we are doing this um, average in this direction and then combine, then we get these are the filters. This is for the X direct filter, X derivative, this is for Y derivative. And these are the things I told you about earlier. So um, now Sabe and detector are very similar. So only difference is that um, here we will assign a higher weight to the central pixel. So again, we do the average smoothing X, blurred image, derivative in X and get edges in X. And so here is the only difference. So in the past, previous one, we are applying same weight, one, one, one. But here, since we are computing the derivative at central pixel, we'll assign the higher weight compared to other pixels. So then same way the derivative and combine, we get a mask like this. And then Y direction again, like that. So same, and but the again two here and combining we get like that. Uh, so that's missing. Yeah. Okay. So um. So, oh, that was the thing. Yeah. Somehow I didn't. Yeah. This one. So we have. This is for x derivative. This is for y derivative. This is in this direction. This is in that direction. Um, and so what is doing is doing the derivative using central difference, finite difference approximation of derivative in the discrete domain and also smoothing by simple averaging. In the Robert, there was equal weighted averaging. In the Sobel, this is the weighted averaging. So we are assigning more weight to the central pixel, okay. So, so then in summary, we have an image, we apply the, this mass to get derivative in X, this mass derivative in Y, we get a gradient, we find the magnitude, we apply threshold, we get edges. So it's very simple. So this is what we have here in image. This is the X derivative, this Y derivative, and then this is the magnitude now and uh, then we apply a threshold, we get these are the pixels. Pixel which is higher than say 100, then we say that's an edge, okay? So that those were two simple classical methods and um, finding derivatives, but averaging was, the filtering was very simple. Um, one is simple box filter like average, others weighted average, which is, you know, central pixels are high. So then came uh, Moore and Hildred edge detector. 
And so David Marr is very influential researcher in computer vision history. So he was a um, neurophysiologist uh, so from England. And uh, he came to MIT uh, in late 70s, early 80s, spent time there. And before him, um, most of the work in computer vision image processing was uh, more ad hoc and more just heuristics. So he wanted to make it more scientific and he came up with this computational approach to computer vision and using the ideas from human vision because he was a neurophysiologist. So here is a Mar. And um, this was his postdoc, Tommy Poggio. Um, and uh, the guy who invented the, um, you, anybody knows about this guy? Who knows about this guy? DNA. Uh, yeah. DNA, yeah. He's the one the DNA. Thing. Yes. So, so this is a very you know famous picture. So the um, Ma wrote this book called Vision. It's a very nice book. Um, and unfortunately, he passed away very quickly. You know, he had a cancer. So um, now in computer vision, the most prestigious um, prize is called Mar Prize, uh, which is given away in International Conference on Computer Vision, ICCV, every year, the best work that year. So you know, to, to remember this David Marr. Now, Ellen Heldreth was David Marr's last master's student. She did a master thesis with him. And um, now Marr, since he was a neurophysiologist, so he knew the work from Hubel and Weisel. These are the researchers. They discovered these um, uh, cells uh, in the retina and they got Nobel Prize in 81. Um, and uh, how the visual processing is done in the retina brain. So they published this paper called Theory of Age Detection in Royal Society of London. And um, so that was the one big breakthrough of you know, edge detector. And this is called more Hildred edge detector. So the basic idea is similar that, you know, we want to smooth the image. And instead of just simple averaging, a weighted averaging, we smooth the image from Gaussian filter. Because the Gaussian filter is uh, symmetric and smooth, very nice, you know, filter. So we smooth with that. Um, then, instead of finding the gradient of first derivative, you find the Laplacian. So Laplacian is the second derivative um, in x plus second derivative y. Uh, and this was, you know, used in lots of physics and other works and there's famous a French mathematician Laplace, uh, that's what it's called. So, so as you know, as I showed you example, so you can find the pixels, which are ages where the intensity is changing, and you can compute the derivative, and if the derivative is high, then you say that's an age. So that is based on first derivative, or you can compute second derivative. So as you know, if the second derivative is uh, extrema, then you, if the second derivative is zero, then that point either is a minima or maxima. Okay, so second derivative zero means the first derivative is either minima or maxima, that's called extrema. So that was the age detectors. So well, apply Gaussian, then compute Laplacian, which is the second derivative x and y, add them up, and then find the zero crossing. Wherever zero, that's an edge. So it's pretty simple. And this was motivated that there are cells in human brain, you know, which are actually doing this operation, the cells 
and uh, that was modeled after that. Okay, so what we will do, we will do the operation, then scan the image and find zero crossing in X direction, Y direction, and uh, repeat this process. Okay, so, so you talk about Gaussian filter already, and so we can take the image, convolve with Gaussian. Now here, convolution correlation, same thing, because Gaussian is symmetric. Then once we get this, and this is a Gaussian filter, then it looks like this in discrete. And then we will take the S, it's a filter image, and compute the derivative secondary in X direction plus secondary in Y direction. And that is called Laplacian. And um, so now you want to make sure that this, uh, you know, sign is used for gradient, which is the upside down triangle. This sign, this uh, triangle with square is used Laplacian. Okay, so some people get mixed up with this, so you want to keep in mind. So now, um, <clears throat> so we have Laplacian Gaussian. So now one good property of this convolution is that so let's say we want to find Laplacian of S. And as you remember, S was that we take an image, apply Gaussian, then we want to find Laplacian of that. But the convolution good property is that we can bring in the Laplacian inside Gaussian and then get the result, then do the convolution with image. Okay? So we can change this it's a property, you can prove it, and I have some proof for this. So what that means that while we already know the Gaussian here and we can analytically differentiate with respect to X with respect to Y, uh, first time, second time added up, we can get the uh, expression for that. And if you differentiate with respect to X, it will look like that. As you know, derivative exponential is exponential itself. Then you want to differentiate this one, which become two X upon two sigma Square because y is constant with respect x, then you can differentiate, you know, differentiate this again with respect to x, then differentiate this with respect to y, then again with respect to y, you add it up, you will get Laplacian, this expression of Laplacian. And you should do this at home to confirm that that's the case. Okay? So then I think it's nice that now we have this expression and we can fit the value of, fix the value of sigma and take different values of x and y, we can come up with a filter. As I showed you, we can come up with a filter for Gaussian where we took the sigma is equal to two. So now this filter looks like um, inverted Mexican head. It's a Laplacian Gaussian filter, okay? So, and if you take the different values of X and Y in this one, then it will look like that. So, you know, this is center, this X goes this way, positive, negative, and uh, Y goes you know, this way and that way. So that is the Laplacian Gaussian or LOG filter. So then we'll apply that, we'll get zero crossings. And um, then zero crossing means that one pixel is positive, other pixel is negative. So there's somewhere there's zero crossing. Or one pixel zero on the left is positive, right is negative. Or, you know, it's other way. Um, so these are the possible cases uh, um, zero crossings can happen. So now we want to look at um, how good are zero crossing, which means that change which happen from positive to negative, it's very small due to noise, are really good. So we look at this uh, slope, um, the change, and we apply threshold on that. Um, so we compute slope of zero crossing, apply threshold, slope, and um, so that's the way this Laplace of Gaussian works. 
Now, one other good property of um, Gaussian is that it is separable. So which means that, um, you know, typically we'll take an image and image is 2D and the Gaussian filter is 2D as I've been showing you. So we will apply that. And for each pixel, as you remember, if there's three by three, then we have to multiply nine times. You know, if it is um, nine by nine, we'll be able to multiply 81 times at each pixel. So there are n square element in a filter. So we'll have n square multiplication for every pixel. Now, since Gaussian is symmetric and separable, uh, what we can do, we can apply one dimensional Gaussian filter around each row of the image, get the result, then apply one dimensional Gaussian around each column. And this is exactly the same as we this one. And, uh, and you can prove that, and I have proved it. Um, so now advantage of doing this is that this has fewer multiplication. Can you tell me, can anybody tell me how many multiplication we'll have here compared to this one? If the size is n. Any volunteer? So we are doing 1D convolution here. Um, and every pixel we are multiplying n times for this one, then every pixel we are multiplying in y direction for this one. So this will become 2n. And um, that will be a good saving compared to n square multiplication because we can do this. So it's a separable, okay? So, and we have shown you this is the filter for the one dimensional. And you can actually show that you can fill this up in every row and then convolve with itself. Then you will get a very close to the two dimensional Gaussian. Okay, so you know, this is um, another Gaussian. So, um, so that's good. Now the, that was about Gaussian that you can separate you can separate Gaussian convolution uh, if you do separable property, um, you can do it two n multiplication. So one x get the result and apply y to the result as compared to n squared if you apply 2D filter. Now for the Laplacian Gaussian, it's different. It is not that separable in that sense, but it's still you can separate in four convolution for 1D convolution. So that's the way we talk about that we are Laplacian of S. S is the Gaussian convolved with I. We can change this. We can take the Laplacian inside the Gaussian or we can do Laplacian. Um, you can um, do you know, you can change the order and so on, it's no problem. So, um, but it requires n, n square multiplication. So what we can do, again, we can show that this is true. So we will apply the first, um, take an image and apply the second derivative cost in one dimension to the image, get the result, then apply the Gaussian filter to the result. That's one thing. And then we'll take an image, apply the second derivative Gaussian in Y, get the result, and apply Gaussian X. So this is exactly the same as this one. Now this has n, n square multiplication, and this will have how many multiplications? Can anybody tell me? Would it be 4n this time? 4n because, uh, you know, so we have um, 1n, 2n, 
three n, four n. Okay, so it's still is good. Four n is much better than n square, so we can do that. Okay, so um, so which means you know take an image, uh, do the Gaussian x Gaussian y. That's the same thing as two D Gaussian. A plasma Gaussian. You take an image. You apply secondary Gaussian in um, <coughs> in x, then Gaussian in y, and then secondary Gaussian y, then Gaussian in x, and then add it up. Okay, it's very nice. Okay, so example is your image here. Then you, this is your Laplace and Gaussian, and these are the zero crossings. Um, and you can then look at the effect of different Gaussian. So when you increase the sigma value, you're looking at a bigger neighborhood. Remember for sigma, you have the three sigma on the left, three sigma on the right. So here you will have uh, seven, here you will have much more than that, and so on. So these are the results you will get. So the algorithm very simple. Apply the LOG to the image, either using 2D filter or you know, like this, or the use four 1D filters like this, and find zero crossings, and find the slope, slope of zero crossings, apply threshold to the slope to mark edges, okay? So now um, the quality of the edges, they have to be robust to noise. Um, and also the, we need to you know, localize the edges correctly. Uh, Sometimes some edge detector actually um, shift the edges, they, they will detect the edges at the places, you know, a couple of pixel, one pixel, you know, far from the real location. So also we need to have, you know, one um, response to one edge. Sometimes you get thick edges, you know, you get several pixels marked as edge, um, or sometimes you miss edges. Um, so those are the important criteria to improve the quality of edges. So let's say here's an example, we have true edge like this. So all these red pixel are edges. Now, sometime you may get um, edges like this. So as you see, this is a correct edge. So this edge is shifted and left. This is correct one. This one is missed. This is shifted. So that's a problem. Or, you know, Poor localization, you know, this can be another uh, place, another problem. Or uh, there's too many edges, these two are thick, these are thick, they actually should be one pixel each. So now to resolve these problems, we have a second and final edge detector, it's called Kenny edge detector. So John Kenny was a master student at MIT around the same time when Mar Hildred was master student. So John Kenny was master student under another uh, British researcher called Mike Brady um, from England, and he was also at MIT. And he's alive, he's actually a knight now you know, from the Queen, he's retired. Um, so he, was Kenny was more mathematical uh, and Mar, Mar was more neurophysiologist and uh, their approach was they wanted to do similar to what the human brain is doing in ages, the cells, center strong cells and so on. So Kenny actually now is a professor at Berkeley. He stands robotics, but he did a master thesis in, in computer vision. Okay, so this is his thesis. Um, and um, so his approach was different. And he said that we want to define um, what should be the edge detector. You know? So what are the criteria we should have to get a good edge detector? 
So one criteria is that um, edge detector should um, have good detection, which means you know it should detect all these edges. You know should have uh, less false positive and false negatives. It should detect the correct edges and should not detect the wrong edges and it should not miss the edges. The second criteria is that it should localize the edges. Wherever the edge is present, it should localize correctly. And um, there should be single response. If there's one edge, it should be one edge. So the edges should not be thick. Um, so he came up with uh, getting these criteria. He came up with the equations. He, came, he formulated this problem. As optimizes problem, he automatically came up with, in order to optimize those criteria, what should be the paste filter, base edge detector. And somehow he ended up actually, um, the gradient of Gaussian edge you know, detector. So if you mathematically optimize those criteria, then the base edge detector is the gradient of Gaussian. So, I mean, he came very close to Maura Hildred because Maura Hildred, they were doing Laplacian and Gaussian, which is second derivative, and zero crossing um, second derivative Gaussian in X and Y. But here, he was doing maxima and a gradient uh, of the first derivative Gaussian. So, so, again, the steps are very similar. So, smooth image with Gaussian, compute derivatives of filter image and find magnitude orientation of gradient, and then apply non-maxima separation, and then stereo So these four were important steps and made a difference, and these are more algorithmic, and these were the practice people were doing at that time, but his contribution was that he mathematically came up with the optimal edge detector. So, um, so, Again, in these, all these edge detectors as you see, there are two main steps. First is smoothing, that you want to smooth the image, or remove noise, filter out noise. Other is you want to find the change, either the first derivative or the second derivative. So those are the things. So smoothing is Gaussian, and this is the way we have been talking about. And then the, the second, uh, the gradient is um, the first derivative, and this is the gradient vector derivative in x and y. Gaussian, then Kanval i, or we can do this way, talk about we can interchange these. So um, that's it. So this is the Gaussian, and the derivative in x direction, take the Gaussian, looks like this. Derivative in y direction looks like this and we apply these filters, we get like this, and then we compute the magnitude, uh, then we apply, the, this is a gradient magnitude, and um, so original image, um, these are the filters, and these are the derivatives and gradient magnitude, more example, um, and the, Gradient of Gaussian can also be computed by difference of Gaussian of different different you know standard deviation. That's another interesting thing. So now the so far all these edge detector they just use the gradient magnitude or Laplacian magnitude or zero crossing. So Kenny was the first edge detector. They look at the orientation information because the gradient is a vector, it has a magnitude and direction. So people haven't used the direction before. So direction, as you know, we can find the tangent inverse gy upon gx, and uh, we can get a gradient direction at each pixel, and these are the different gradient directions that you see here. So now what um, important step can you did? Say, well, we need to, find the edges um, in the direction of gradient because see that gradient is direction where the maximum change happens. 
So if we see this change in this direction, uh, that's what we are after. And we want to suppress the rest of them. So that's called non-maxima suppression. We want to suppress the non-maxima, okay? So suppress the pixel, which are not local maxima. So here's a good example. So let's say we want to detect whether this point is an edge or not. It's a really good edge point or not. So we look at that this point and look at direction of gradient, which is this one. So we look at the pixel next to that in this direction, gradient direction, and pixel on the other side. So these are the two pixels. We compare the gradient at the center pixel, compare this one, this one, if it's a maxima, then we say that is, we want to keep it. If it is not maxima, then we want to zero it out. So we want to suppress. It's not really maxima because it is not greater than this and this. So that makes a big difference. So, um, so then we find the gradient uh, magnitude, um, and then we can apply a threshold after the suppression, the um, remove those, the pixel which are above some threshold after the non-maximum suppression, they, we can say those are the edges. But then he did another thing, they apply the two thresholds, hysteresis thresholds. So that says if the, if the gradient of the pixel is above high, declare this as an edge pixel. And um, if it is below low, declare this as non-edge pixel. But if it is between low and high, then we look at if in the neighborhood of that, there are pixels which are um, between low and high, we want to, um, because this pixel connected to the pixel which is high, we want to keep that pixel also. So one is the notion of connectedness. So if there's a pixel here, so we say all the four pixels, left, right, top, bottom are connected to that. So we can do that and there's eight connectedness, all pixels here are connected and you know, six connectedness. So you know we have to define which one you are using. So let's say we know that. Then here is example. So now, um, so these are the edges you get. So, and suppose let's say this is the, so the gradient magnitude. Here gradient magnitude is very low. Here varies very high, low, then high and so on. So now if you apply only high threshold, one threshold, then you will get only these edges, okay? All other will be disappear. Um, and um, if you apply only low threshold, then you get all of these, and this actually is noisy, the little contour, which we don't want. But this is a more genuine contour, and we want that. So therefore, what we are gonna do, that while if, um, since this part, this will be, above high will be picked up, which is fine. And, um, but we wanna pick up this one, now, if the, the remaining part of this contour, since it is above low and is connected to the pixels which are above high, we will pick up all those. And this one, none of the pixels are above high, um, so we will not get you know, picked up. So that's the way the series threshold works. The two threshold, they work jointly, and that makes a difference, okay? So we scan the image from left to right, top to bottom, find the gradient magnitude of pixel, it was above high threshold, declare that as a edge point. We constantly consider neighbor of this pixel, gradient magnitude is above the low threshold, declare that as an edge pixel, and so like that. So this is the magnitude, this is just above threshold, and this is using the status threshold, high threshold 35, no trace 15. So this is much better than this one. Um, so that's the main point. 
So you can get um, before non maximum suppression like this, after non maximum suppression, then this is the um, threshold low high, you know, to connected component and sorry, and you will get these edges, final edges, you know, this is we apply the stress threshold connected low and high, and this will be the finest edges, which is much, much better than previous one. So that's it. So original image, again, there's a, what should be sigma value, so different sigma value play important role here. Um, and so that's it. So uh, I have a um, nice uh, discussion in my these notes for my class. And also there's a good chapter uh, on this book. This is also online available. This is online available. So this can be, you can look at that. And also this lecture is available on YouTube, my lecture um, on the CRCV. Um, so you can look at that also. So I think uh, I'm done and I can answer any questions you guys have. We have about 20 minutes. So let's look at um, the stop sharing. Okay, yeah.